driving this um, community-driven ballot measure, the empty home tax. And so we all know we're in an affordability crisis. Like, that's not news, right? Like, you, you or someone you know has struggled to secure affordable housing. Um, the, the figure is something like over 70% of people in Santa Cruz that rent are rent yeah. burdened, which means they're paying way more than 30%. I want to. I would like to see what it sounds like. Actually, I would like to see what it sounds like on the bullhorn. Would you? <laughs> Let's make it fun. Can you hear me on the horn? Oh. Yeah. I don't. I don't like it. You sound great. You sound good. Get used to the bullhorn. Yeah. You know, in these empty homes, it's not just that that sucks and it should be a person in there. They they really have effects, right? They hollow out our neighborhoods. I know people on the east side, that they don't have a community. It's like there's one person on a whole block. They do, used to know all their neighbors, and now it's like one person. So they hollow out neighbor neighborhoods, they increase housing costs, and they make it impossible for the workers of Santa Cruz, everybody that makes Santa Cruz great, everybody with an average income, to actually live here, mm. right? Like, Another statistic to throw at you is based on the average medium wage in town, you need to have two plus jobs to not be rent free. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to yeah. figure out how to build these units and the affordable, uh, the empty home tax is a way to get these units built, right? You'll hear the planning department, I'm actually a planning commissioner. We don't meet anymore because they don't want to hear from us because <laughs> uh, we have a progressive majority. <laughs> so we haven't met in two months. But, um, you know, they, this is a way to actually get the money to build these units because you'll hear the, the city council, you'll hear the planning director, Lee Butler, say it doesn't pencil out. Well, this money can go to bring these projects over the edge. We can partner with nonprofit developers and demand the city use this money to build affordable mm -hmm. units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's going to take us all to do it. Emptyhometax.org. We've been on Google enough where you can just type in empty home tax. We're number three, I think, in the search. So go to the website. There's also a clipboard going around. You can drop in and out of this campaign as much as you have time for. There's going to be, the process is the same. We're going to need 5,000 signatures to get on the ballot. We're probably going to start in the fall. 
when we get our signatures, we're going to qualify, and then we're going to win this thing. That's right. So, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the fellow with his empty neighborhood. Empty yeah. literally, yeah. or talks to nobody, doesn't know anybody. Or there's a bunch of yuppies from Santa Clara that bought up. Yes, on to all of that. Oh. You know, basically people, you know, they, they have these homes, they come on weekends, they come for holidays. I think you were up first. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to sort of similar question, is Airbnb and VRBO considered empty occupancy? Or yeah, not? so so we've done, a, so the, the group of folks who've been grinding away on this for the last three or four months, we really tried to do our homework. Um, the, the, the example really that's been going the longest is in BC and Vancouver and British Columbia. Um, so trying to understand what number of days we can get past and what is gonna be impactful. So it, do, it doesn't matter what it is, it just matters if there's a body in it for 120 days. And so there are some Airbnbs that are gonna pass that threshold and there are some that are not. Um, but it's not sort of specifically for any one kind of dwelling in it, it's just saying like, you need to have a body in there. And we, we did that, you know, we really did that because um, we don't wanna pick a fight with Airbnb and we, the numbers and the data that we had said that we could be impactful at that 120 day limit. So that's the, what we picked. So it's kind of yes and no to, is the answer to your question. Go ahead. Um, for the 5,000 signatures, are those exclusively from citizens? Do they have to be citizens? Registered voters. Oh, and okay. so if you haven't registered you to vote, you can do it online. I brought my tablet. Ooh. I'll do it after the movie Ooh. or during the movie. I'm happy to let you borrow it. Um, because we're going to have to show up for this. And I get it, man. Like, voting for people and showing up, it's just like you do it time and time again, and they're not serving our interests. But the thing about ballot initiatives is it's like A equals B, right? Like, there's no, like, we elect somebody and hope they're going to do the right thing. It's like, we elect, the, we pass this, and it happens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just have a question about the organizing timeline. You said in the fall you're going to start collecting signatures. Like, what date are you going to start? And if you don't mind, how come you're not going to start in the summer? How come you're going to start then? Yeah, so it's a little bit of strategery. So okay. the, um, when, you, when, you, when you file this thing, you get six months. You get 180 days. And also the way that ballot law is written, as soon as you qualify, so your six-month start clock starts, and you got to get them in. Once they, and they actually have a pretty short time to validate the signatures. Once you get validated, you end up on the next ballot. We don't want to end up in a, on the primary ballot. So in non-presidential years, California's primary is not in March, it's in June. So we don't want to start too early and qualify and be up on the, the primary ballot when we want to be on the general. So we're still kind of figuring it out, but fall is the rough time. So you're going for the November election? November 2022 start oh, registering now oh, okay. and then make sure you keep updating your address so that you know you can count that your signature can count and we can get this done in Thank the you. back and then Harry. Um, I have three questions the first is uh, <laughs> what, the, what, what the uh, what would be the um, the enforcement mechanism that you envision for this, uh -huh. uh, this tax the second question is uh, would this be a tax on vacant land like Oakland's no. vacancy ordinance is? I can answer well. that quickly, no. Um, <laughs> uh, why or why not for that? And then okay. the third question is, uh, uh, why is, uh, I saw on your website that there is a different tax for uh, single family homes than there is for like, condos or townhouses. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, so a lot of that is based on what other folks have done, <coughs> just having conversations about um, what seems reasonable. So there's no hard and fast answer about why it's 6,000 or why it's 3,000. Um, one of the reasons is because we're modeling it off of what happened in Oakland. Um, there are a lot of things that didn't go great in Oakland, but those, um, those that fee structure seemed to land pretty well with folks. And so that's why we picked those numbers. Um, everywhere that these have done, like they've done it in Auckland, they've done it in the UK, they're all done for a slightly different reason. In BC, it was really based on foreign investment. Um, in Auckland, it was something a little bit different. In Oakland, it was primarily to deal with blight and vacant lots. Mm -hmm. We just have very few vacant
vacant lots in Santa Cruz. Um, and some of them are connected to properties. And frankly, it's just a fight that, um, based on the data that we had and the amount of money, it just was a fight that we didn't really want to pick because it didn't seem to be worth it. Um, that was two. What was um, the third? Enforcement. Enforcement, right. And so we've kind of picked and choose looking around the world about how to do this. Um, it's going to be on the property owners to actually register every year. It's going to be modeled a little bit after um, the Vancouver tax. And then there's going to be audits that are going to require property owners to um, to actually provide documentation to support their declaration every year. Yeah, are there going to be cheaters? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course there are going to be cheaters. Uh, just to, along the cheater line, so with the t when you own property, you have to register with the tax assessor and tell them whether it's your primary residence or your secondary residence. In the city of Santa Cruz, according to the tax assessor, guess how many second homes are registered here? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yes. Just My last guess was two hours. Zero. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. So there are call bullshit. Second, <laughs> second <laughs> second Santa Cruz. Oh. So yeah, really, <laughs> people will say um, whatever, right? So we're trying, we're trying to plan for that, and you know, and if people have ideas, we have the ordinance written. We're going to be going to a lawyer shortly, but you know, we're always wanting to take information. If somebody has bright ideas about how to make it harder to cheat, like get involved, you know, sign up, get in touch with us. This is really community driven, and it's not going to happen unless we have everybody involved. In fact, how much revenue is raised in Oakland? Uh, they don't know yet because it's a shit show up there. <laughs> um, they had a really, so Oakland passed by 70%, but on the ordinance it basically said we're going to uh, tax vacant parcels and had no specificity. So the city council have kind of been making it on the fly. Um, the, the, the money was due last July and they still haven't quite figured it out. Um, Vancouver is a giant city. Like, um, I don't know how much bigger, but significantly exponentially bigger than Santa Cruz. They've been bringing in 38 to 48, or 38 to 40 million every year. Um, but you know, again, if you just scale it down, if we, ha if 500 people have to pay this tax, it's three million dollars. So, um, and and if there's 17,277 parcels, that's a pretty low percentage. There's no definitive public data to answer how much money we can make, but. We think it's worth the effort. Mm -hmm. Whatever we make is going to be more than zero. So that's right. Tax the rich. <laughs>